Hello everybody and here is the Samsung Galaxy S4 and I do want to show you guys this, this phone as fast and as informative uh, but as easy as possible so it's probably gonna be about 15 to 20 minutes long but it's definitely you know good to watch it all so if you guys are noticing on the very top where that purple light is blinking just so you guys know that is actually one of the new sensors on the Galaxy S4 that is uh, in cahoots with the air gestures that you guys can use and so what it's sending off is the IR waves and I'll show you how the uh, air gestures work in a second. And since we're talking a little bit about the sensors, right next to that blinking light will be the light sensor. Then you'll have the proximity sensor on the other side. And then your two megapixels on the front. And so before I go into everything in detail of the phone, I do want to tell you that there is a help app that is actually preloaded on the device that you can learn everything as much as possible. So in terms of the new features, if you guys wanna learn about how to do motion or anything about the camera, anything about group play, this will actually literally go over any and everything that you ever need to know about. So they give little, uh, little videos for you in text. So I wanted to start that off before I started talking about the phone. Talk about air gestures. And just so you guys know, inside of the settings icons on the top when you pull down the notification bar this is where you can actually turn specific things on or off inside of that app or you can just turn them off um and if you pull it down with two fingers that's when all of them show up so fyi on that one uh so in terms of showing you the whole air gestures let's say that i'm looking at some photos here all you have to do is with that sensor right there that is purple all you have to do is wave your fingers across the sensor and you can go left or right and if you guys were to do it with the internet, you just have to go up and down or left and right. And so if I was to head back out of here and I go into the internet, right here I'm on msn.com. Thanks for showing me the, the pecs and abs. Anyways, uh, this is where you can scroll up and down just by waving your fingers across the sensor on the extreme top. And just so you guys know, you can do this up to four inches away, at least from what I tested. And you can also do that in the complete darkness. So I actually walked into a closet, shut the door, made sure the lights was off, and not only did the air gestures worked, uh, but the air view worked as well, which I'll show you that in a second. And so up and down changes, or I should say scrolls up and down. And then when you go left and right, this is where you change the tabs. So when does this come into play? Let's say that you're cooking and you have your hands dirty, greasy, whatever the case, maybe eating Cheetos, doing pizzas, or you're a female and you just did your nails, maybe a dude. But anyways, um, and you don't want to touch the screen because of uh, your hands just you know, don't want to touch the screen. This is where you can scroll up and down. Honestly, this thing is amazing. I use this all day, every day. Um, and now I talked a little bit about the air view. In terms of the air view, when you go into your phone, this is one of the cases. The other time you can use this is if you are text messaging and you want to read a full text or emails, things like that, without even opening them up. So with the air view, I'm going to go to the speed dials. So if I hold my finger, I'm about an inch away from the screen. All I gotta do is hold my finger above the screen and it's actually gonna show me who I set as my speed dial before you have to call them and hang up and then call the correct person. This is a way that you can actually check it out before you do it and then you can make your phone call. And something else you guys may be asking yourself is what is up with that little tab on the uh, left hand side there? So if anybody is familiar with the Note 2, this is where you can do the multi-app or multi-window. And this is where, let's say you wanna have, I don't know, let's say the gallery open as well as let's go into the internet you can put it on the top or the bottom doesn't matter you can hold your phone portrait mode or landscape mode and this is where you can do your full-on multitasking so you can watch the internet as well as check out your videos pictures whatever the case um, as well as you can move this center bar to the left or to the right uh, for whichever one is more important you can also switch them up if you want to and then if you want a specific window open, you just hit on the open window or hit the X and that will actually close that. If you guys do not see that tab, it is due to the fact that you did not press and hold on the back icon for three seconds. And if you wanted to come back, press and hold on the back icon for about three seconds. If this still does not pop up, what you want to do is head into your settings bar. And this is where the multi window is at. If you turn it off, you'll never be able to turn it back on. You want to make sure that this is highlighted in order for you to have your multi window on and off. The next great app that I'm going to be showing you guys that is built into the phone will be the optical reader. And so optical reader, real quick, let's see if my, there we go. You can take pictures of uh, things so you can detect text, business cards, and QR codes. So with business cards, you just place the business card right here, 
take a photo of it, and then it'll actually pull up all the details, the first name, the last name, the email, the website, the address, all that type of stuff. And you just hit save to contact. And you can also take a picture of something in a different language. If it is instructions, if it is a menu, postcard, anything like that. Uh, and just to show you guys, if you're taking something in Korean and you want to make sure that it is reading it correct, hit on the very last icon down here. This is the translate button. Um, and let's put from the Spanish into, let's do Korean. And maybe let's say I'm not English and I want to maybe put it into, I don't know, Finnish. So it just kind of, I basically wanted to show this off to show you how many different languages there is. So I'll just put it back to English, even though I'm not taking a photo of anything. But then this is where you can get anything, translate it into your language, and then you can go off in your day. So if you went on a huge trip and you want to make sure you tell your taxi driver exactly where to go and what time and all the details, they don't know a word you're saying, um, you can actually take a photo, show it to them, and then they know exactly where to go. Along with the optical reader where I was speaking about with uh, taking photos, you can actually go into S Translator. So yes, it is going to be extremely similar to Google Translator, but this one is actually built into the phone, not only in terms of this app, but it was built into text messaging and emails along with the optical reader, as we were talking about before. Uh, so I'll just do one really fast. I'll go from English to let's just do Spanish. So I'm going to type something here real fast. So here is what I just typed, you know, how are you today? What phone are you looking for? And so if I wanted to speak exactly what I just wrote, I hit on this button right here. If I wanted to translate, I hit on that button right there and now it is translating into Spanish. So now this way they can actually read exactly what you just wrote or you can have it speak to them. And then if they want to speak down, uh, you know, and get back into you with answering you, they, they can actually speak Spanish right here. So they press on this mic button and then it'll write it in Spanish down there, which will translate it into English up here. So if you want to have a full on conversation with somebody, here you go. And as I said, this is built into text messaging as well as emails. And so if somebody texts you in Spanish, this sentence right here, this icon will pop up in text messaging. All you do is press it, it'll take you to this screen, and it's going to show you exactly what it shows. Same thing with emails. All right, so you cannot talk about the Galaxy S4 without getting into the camera. By far, my favorite feature that is on this phone. So in terms of the camera, over here on the left-hand side, you're going to see that there's a carrot. And this is by, I believe, the very first phone that actually has the live filters that you can actually choose from. And so you can actually see exactly what it's going to look like before you take the photo. And just so you guys know, you can actually edit the photo when you get done taking the photo. You also have the different modes. What's on the very bottom here. And if I show you all the modes all at once here, you're going to notice that there's 12 of them. And on the very top left, it says auto. I'm hoping and believing that sometime in the near future, that will actually switch into the 360 degree panorama photo shot. So it's a little different than the panorama on the bottom left. Panorama on this phone can actually do a full 360 around. And with the Photosphere, you can do the whole 360 all the way around panorama, but you can get everything above and below you. So if you're a realtor, this is going to be your best friend. You can stand in one room and you can take one photo. You upload it straight to your website and then people can actually see exactly what the entire room looks like just by going up and down and left and right. So if I go back into the spindle, I'll show you everything that's brand new for this device uh, and not talking about some of these other ones that's in the other devices. So with Sound and Shot, this is where once you go into this mode, you want to take a, let's say a, you have a friend who is laying on the beach. You want to take a photo of them, but also have the sound of, you know, sounds of waves crashing in. Or if you have a street performer, you want to get a photo and get a few seconds of exactly what they're doing. So sound and shot, it takes a photo and then records sound. So automatically it will record nine seconds. Manually, you can record up to nine seconds. For drama shot, this is where it takes a series of photos and it puts it into one photo. So for instance, I believe it takes about a hundred photos in five seconds. And as they are going across the screen, it's going to lay them out probably about every five, every uh, second, wherever they're going throughout the scene. And it's going to place them into the, into the shot in one photo. So I'll show you some of those examples here in a little bit. Animated photos where it creates its own GIF or some people call it a GIF. They're both the exact same name, same meaning, both right, just like the same as aunt and aunt. Um, and then we also have into eraser where underneath the eraser, it takes five consecutive photos and then anything that's moving in the background will turn purple and then you just touch them and then they, you know, they delete. So for instance, if it's a person or if it's a car, 
you know, so if you're taking a photo of a friend, but there's a statue across the street, or you're at Walt Disney World, or anything where there's a lot of movement, even people who photobomb, uh, this is going to be your good friend for those types of situations. So then you can press them when, um, and then they can delete. And since they take five pictures, it will fill in exactly what is supposed to be in the background, either before or after they walked into the frame. Now, my very last one that I'm going to show off here, I'm going to move out of the way. Um, just so you can't see me, but over here you have the dual shot. And so in terms of dual shot, this is where you can record anything with the front facing and also the rear facing camera as well, which I think is crazy cool. Um, and not only can you have it set up in split, but you can also do it with stamp if you want to. Uh, you can move them around, make them bigger or smaller. If you're recording or taking a photo, this is when you can do this. And if you are recording a photo and you happen to move this around, it will move in the photo as well, which is so cool. You can also do it with a heart, um, which this one you can have a lot of fun with, along with window and some of the other ones that's listed. And you can always switch the cameras around on which ones you want to be in the front and the back. So you can take photos of your little kids running in the background with you in the front. Uh, and this, this phone actually came with a lot of different uh, examples in terms of the one that I have. So with some of those examples, when I go in the gallery here real fast, you know, uh, this one, let's see, this one is showing a video with the uh, the dual shot. Which, you know, that's fun. You cannot not have fun with that. Um, and then this was talking about with people moving in the background. And then here is a shot of the drama shot. So then you can take sequential photos. Um, and then it's as if they're in one photo. So it's pretty cool. You can have a lot of fun with this camera. That's definitely my number one feature of this device is the camera itself. And now here I'm going to be showing you guys the group play. Group play is where this is one of the apps that I will actually be going into later on in a different video to show you more in depth on exactly what you're doing and how to do it and things like that. Um, so I'm going to first start it off as not doing a password. Password is you just set up a password and then everybody who joins your groups has to know your password in order to join. So I'm going to actually create a group and this is creating a mobile AP, which basically what that means is that it is creating its own Wi-Fi signal that is shooting off to where other people can join on. You're not using your own data. It's basically just like Wi-Fi direct, if not probably the exact same thing. So some of the stuff you can do is you can play games. Uh, there's like a poker game and the other game is similar to Bejeweled. Share documents. So if you're doing a presentation for work, you share pictures. Uh, so then not everybody has to go over your shoulder to view the, uh, you know, the vacation you just took. My favorite will be with the music. And again, I'll do this in a separate video, but just to kind of show everybody what it all does, I'm going to show you. So let's say I do Crossroads. So I'm going to be listening to this song, for which I'll turn it down a little bit. And so as you can tell right here, you see how I have master volume and then my volume right there? Uh, one of the things is that once people join in on this group, whoever created the group is actually in charge of other people's volumes as well. Uh, so I'm going to pause this for right now. One of the things you're going to notice is you have the left and the right. And so as of right now, if one other person joins in, I'll be the left speaker and then they can be the right speaker. And then you can also dead it, you know, switch up exactly what you want to be, uh, who is going to be left, who's going to be right, who's going to be middle. And mine right now says a number one, which it'll say eight once seven more people join in and then you're maxed out. And this is where you can create your own surround sound system. And so the speaker alone itself is pretty good, but when you have other people that have the Galaxy S4 and you guys wanted to create a surround sound system, well, here you go. Oh, and also, um, <laughs> you're gonna see that your group play mobile AP is still gonna be running in the background. And the purpose for that is that whoever is in charge or in, in the lead of the group, basically if they have to go out, go back into text messages or emails or whatever, it's still gonna be keep playing. So you wanna make sure that you press and hold on the home icon and then get rid of group play so it's not actually running in the background. Another great feature about the Samsung Galaxy S4 that you definitely do not wanna skip is for anybody who needs this phone to be easy and simplistic. And so just so you guys know, when you go into the menu and settings, this is where you go into my device. Then you go to home screen mode. And when you set it underneath easy, hit apply and then okay. And then this is where you can actually have your entire phone in extremely easy mode as possible. You cannot get easier than this. 
Uh, so even for example, inside of the camera, it's, as you know, the entire profile. So here underneath the mode, you only have six modes. You don't have the big 12. Um, you can also head into your phone and it's gonna look like an electronic jitter, you know, jitterbug, which is almost similar to the very first one before um, in the normal mode. And then also when you head into internet, this is where you have a huge home <laughs> um, you know, button, as well as there used to be a, a zoom in and zoom out buttons on the bottom right here. So it makes it really easy so you don't even have to do you know, pinch to zoom and things like that because, you know, maybe they just want it easy as buttons. And then you also have your, let's see, let me get out of here. And then you also have your menu and settings. This is the settings inside of easy. Very, very easy guys. So if you are somebody who is looking for the latest and greatest, but the easiest phone possible, um, with all of that in there, this is the Galaxy S4. And here is the S Health app. S Health is a built-in app that actually has a built-in pedometer, so it keeps track of your walking. It also has the barometer for the humidity, and then it also has temperature gauges and things like that as well, too. And so inside of here, you have your walking mate. And so with the walking mate, it, this is where it picks up all of your different walking that you do. Um, so you can keep track of that. You also have the exercise mate. And so inside of here, let's say that I went and played basketball for about, let's do 35 minutes. Once you hit done, then it keeps track of the calories that you've burned. And then you can also have your food tracker. And so inside of food tracker, let's say for breakfast, I had, let's say that I did a sausage. And so there is my sausage that I wrote down up there. And you hit on search. Underneath sausage, it's gonna pull up if you had a pork sausage, beef sausage, country sausage. I'll just say a turkey sausage, and you hit done. And then this is where it keeps track of all your food. So if any of you guys are a uh, health nut and things like that, or you just wanna make sure you keep track of how much you're walking and you wanna see how many calories you're burning with how much you're working out, this is a good app for you. And so just so you guys know, with a lot of the stuff that I showed you guys between easy mode and all the camera shots and modes, as well as the S Health, you also have the optical reader, the S translator. This phone is literally made for everybody. So this has the ins and outs of pretty much the entire spectrum of what um, pretty much anybody would use anything for. So that is one good thing that I like about the Samsung Galaxy S4. So for some of the settings that we have not yet touched upon, for the Smart Stay, this is one where you can actually turn on in terms of with the Smart Stay, the screen will always stay lit for you as long as you look at the screen. So it's perfect for if you're reading emails or books and things like that. You also have smart rotation. This is where as long as your head and the phone is also changing the same orientation, just like this uh, animation shows, then the screen on the phone will actually not auto rotate. So just like with this, um, how it's going to rotate like this, it will not do that if you were actually, you know, laying down with the phone. And then smart pause is where I can't really demonstrate right now with the camera in the way. But once you're watching a movie that's saved on the phone, if you look away from the phone, the camera will recognize it and then it'll pause. And then when you look right back at the screen again, it'll work again. And smart scroll is where it basically will either recognize your, your eyes or your head. Um, and then it's gonna notice that however you hold the phone is where it's gonna be calibrated from. So for example, I won't do the head tilting, but I will show you the head uh, or the tilting of the device. Uh, just due to the fact that this camera is in my my way here. So let's say we go into the internet. So that green icon right there, notice that, hey, your phone is sitting right here. That is probably how you hold your phone. Now all you gotta do is tilt the phone like this to actually tilt the page. And you go up and down just like that. The head tilt works the exact same way, but instead of tilting the phone, you just tilt your head up and down. And that's how that works. The last piece of detail on what I just spoke about in terms of the smart scroll, when you hit it once, it'll actually be for the head. So if you see the eye, that means that it's the head tilting. Press it again, that is the device tilting. Press it one more time and it is off. I do want to say thank you for anybody who has just watched this video. I will have many more coming out after this and I have several before this. And there is going to be a few more videos I make with this phone talking about screen mirroring and Samsung Link, along with how you can change all the different settings with your lock screen options and actually even how I got this lock screen to work just like this.